Ever drink water out of a can? Welcome to the Jason Graves filler arc. East 5. Whew. Wow. What a fucking letdown. I know that by the nature of the series, it means that I'm about 30 years late to this realization. But shoot, man. How could I not be disappointed? Both 3 and 4 made my top 100 list, and 5 honestly wouldn't even be close to sniffing that. So what's different? Well, the biggest change is there's no more bump combat. Now, bump combat, if you're not aware, is this archaic system where all you do is run into the enemies and they take damage. There's no animation, there's nothing fancy, you just run into them. Think hide lied for NES. Sure, it's a little silly, but it's also what made Yeast Yeast. It was the series staple. Now we just are left with another game where you press A to attack, like everything else. You know, it just takes a little bit of that edge off. It takes away a little bit of the series identity. Yeast 5 also has this magic system, which is okay, but it levels up separately, as in, in order to level up your magic, you need to kill enemies with magic, and in order to level up your physical, you gotta kill enemies with your sword. That's all well and good, but you can't use magic against boss fights, so why would I bother ever leveling it up? I get that having magical attacks in the arsenal makes boss fights more difficult to balance, but most of them can be cheesed with physical attacks anyway. And they're nothing special, they all have simple patterns, and the strategy for pretty much every boss fight is to find the sweet spot near them where you can just hack away. This is how most boss fights play out, just get close and hammer them. It's a little lame that this just is now a discount Zelda, or probably more like Brain Lord, but without the extra weapon types or awesome dungeon design. Because Yeast 5 is just kind of a bog simple game. The dungeons aren't challenging or complex, you kind of just waltz through them. And the whole game just kind of goes in one eye and out the other. Now I see why nobody voted for this. So, on my Patreon I run polls sometimes where people vote on what game I'm gonna do next. Yeast 5 was on the poll forever and didn't receive a single vote ever in any of them. Now this isn't rare, a whole host of games nobody ever voted for, but one time I thought it would be funny if I were to take all the results that nobody had ever voted on and put them into one poll. So I did that and Yeast 5 still didn't manage to get a single vote, which was shocking to me because this is a well-known series. It has fans, people enjoy the Yeast games, but even still, nobody wanted me to play Yeast 5. I wanted to play Yeast 5, so I called an audible and did anyway, here, but now I see why. It's just such a boring game. Now, as a series, it's more like Ultima than Final Fantasy because all the Yeast games have the same protagonist. The thing is, he just goes to a different world each time. It's a different problem of the day. This time, he goes to a new land, and the desert is expanding, and it's up to you to find out why. Or rather, you're hired by a rich guy to get these crystals, which will stop the desert from expanding. Yeah, it's a MacGuffin plot about elemental crystals. Gee, never heard that one before. It only takes about half an hour to get each crystal, and there's only six of them. Thankfully, the final area, which opens up after, is much longer than that, taking up about a third of the game by itself. This game's structure reminds me of... Now this is maybe a weird comparison, but stick with me. It reminds me of Pokemon Generation 5's map. Not so much how the game itself plays out, but how the map looks. And that there's a big circle, and you just kind of go around from area to area doing the thing, eventually leading back to where you started. It even has the same stupid gatekeepers at certain points. Like this asshole. You shouldn't go any further beyond this point. Regardless of how much experience you have as an adventurer, it's too risky! Well, fuck you, Zeke. I'm world-renowned. This is my fifth adventure where I'm saving the world. You're not letting me leave the stupid village because there's some fucking random, like, monsters that are just gonna kill me? Oh yeah, and the monsters on the other side of this guy are exactly the same ones I fought to get to this place because this game does the cheap trick of not actually introducing new enemies for new areas most of the time. Not even palette swaps, they just look the same and do more damage for some reason. So you go around, you get the six crystals, whatever, and of course it turns out the rich guy is actually evil, so he locks himself inside of his own house with the crystals, except, oops, he forgot about the secret underground tunnel that leads from the local inn directly into his house. Stupid. Place only has two entrances and you forgot about one of them. Then he turns into a demon, you kick his ass, and... 
you're transported to the final area, a point of no return, which turns the whole thing into a giant where the fuck do I go kind of game. You're in a dungeon, there's a whole town hidden in here, there's four switches, a house where some ghost that's been talking to you the whole game lives. Do the final area, fight some guy that you have never seen before in the entire game up to this point, and that's the game. In the action RPG hierarchy, I'd say that this is much better than King Arthur, but probably not as good as Elkahest. And you know, thinking back on that game, I did it a little dirty. It's not an RPG, I stand by that, and is only considered one because it came from Squaresoft. But as far as overhead action mechanics go, that game's gotta be the king. It feels great to control, the multiple powers actually have a meaningful effect on gameplay, they fucking nailed the boss fights. So yeah, Yeast 5, a remarkably average video for a remarkably average game. Fargo Retro, friend of the channel, bring back the tier rankings. You know what, we're running short this episode, so why not? So I was gonna save this exclamation for my 10,000 subscriber Q&A, which I'm doing by the way, at 10,000 subscribers, I wanna answer as many questions as I can, so leave me some. But I stopped doing the tier list, and the reason I stopped doing it was mostly analytics driven. Okay, so if you look at this graph, this represents the number of people who clicked on the video that are still watching. As you can see, it's, you know, it goes down over time as you would expect. But here at the end, you notice how there's a little slight tail? You can barely see it on this video. And that's because I stopped doing the tier list. It's because I stopped doing a bunch of bullcrap at the end of the videos. Let's take a look at an older episode. All right, here's an example. See how at the end of the video, it trails off? by like 10%. That's because when viewers get a sense that the video is wrapping up, they click off. They just do, like people click off and it's not good for your metrics to have a trail of people click off right before the video ends. So I made a conscious decision to not draw it out so much. I kind of just want the video to end suddenly. You ever watch Sunny V? That guy ends his videos mid sentence and if I didn't have a Patreon and like a send off, I probably would do the same thing. Basically, like what would happen is when I get to the tier list, as soon as I put that game onto the list, people would click off the video because they know that's it. That signals the end of the content. My other reason for doing it, I had a second one, is that I was running out of ways to visually display the entire list on one screen. Like, look at this. This is the tier list as I left it off. It doesn't even fit in one image just in the web browser. So me trying to like pretty it up so it appears presentable in the video was becoming tougher and tougher the more games I added to the list. Especially with my videos being in a four by three aspect ratio, it gives me less real estate to work with. It was just kind of becoming a mess and I didn't like how it looked and people were clicking off, so I scrapped it. But you know what, every once in a while, I still think tier lists are fun. Let's slot these new games in because I've done five reviews now since the last tier list update so this is more or less how we left it i think i changed one or two things i guess that's up to you to spot them if you'd, you're obsessive enough front mission front mission is a decent rts not rts but like turn-based strategy game i don't think it's anywhere near as good as fire emblem here um i don't think it's quite in this level either do i just want to put it in good because despite it having like you know, a one dominant strategy problem. I, I do think that it's a decent game. Yeah, it's better than Fire Emblem Mystery of the Emblem, I'd say. How nice, how charitable am I feeling towards Dragon View? It's definitely not sniffing up here, but it's not truly bad either. I think we're just gonna go okay for Dragon View. Where'd I put uh, Draken? Yeah, it's definitely better than Draken. Only one slot higher though? Yeah, I mean, I'd rather play pretty much any one of these games, so in it goes. Dragon Quest VI, it's not going in GOAT's tier. It's probably not going in excellent. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'd say it's a better game than Final Fantasy II. Obviously it came out years later and there's, you know, you gotta grade it on a bit of a curve, but that's right, grader. Tactics Ogre, oh man. The surprise of the whole series really for me because I did not expect to like it, but no, this is a fantastic game. Do I really have Mystery of the Emblem and Grader? And then, yeah, I think X, yeah. I think it's pretty neck and neck with the uh, genealogy of the Holy War here, but you know, if I had to give the nod to one game, I'd give it to Tactics Ogre. And Yeast 5, the subject of this very boring video today. I'm gonna go meh. It's not bleh tier because it's not painful to play this game. It's fine. It's just kind of, it's smooth. You know, it goes down easy. It's a short game. It just doesn't really do anything noteworthy or remarkable, which is 
something I think I said about Lufia and I said about freaking Ultima 7. Wait a second, I'm missing it. I'm missing Savage Empire. Okay, I didn't forget Savage Empire. I just saved it as a web P, so it didn't show up in the tier list thing, so I did convert it to a PNG. Something that you'll be doing a lot of if you make YouTube videos. I mean, it's only fair to put it right next to Ultima 7, right? They're basically the same game. I think if I had to give the nod to one, I'd probably give it to Savage Empire. Really, just because you don't have to fumble with keys ever. So yeah, this is the updated tier list. Take a good look, because it's probably not going to be in a video for a while after this.